Hello Zimmers and welcome to Tessel Airport in the Netherlands. It is a GA airport on uh, one of the uh, isles in the Wadden Sea. And what we're going to do today is take off to the southwest, fly over Den Helder, make a left turn, fly along the Afsluitdijk towards Friesland, check out Leeuwarden, I think we'll continue towards uh, Lauwersmeer. Then make another left turn and fly back to Tessel along these islands here. Just uh, to see what uh, this area looks like in the sim. I must say the um, representation of Tessel Airport, uh, well I'm not impressed by it at all. Um, and the main thing that I don't like is not necessarily the airport buildings themselves. I mean of course it's autogen, it's a small airport so there's there's nothing wrong with that, but when you look behind the airport, you see these like four-story buildings. And well, if you take a look at the area in uh, Street View, I can't really see where the Autogen would get its information to place four-story buildings around this airport, because there simply are none. Um, If you then take a look at the tree lines, I'm not really noticing those either. So in terms of uh, scenery, this uh, little airport, well, it, let me put it this way, it can do with an upgrade. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, it's, it's out of the box. Um, auto-generated airport, uh, at least there is buildings and the airport is in the sim because uh, I've noticed that a lot of airports are not even in the sim. Especially military airfields are missing. Um, for instance, uh, like I said, we're gonna fly towards uh, Leeuwarden. Leeuwarden has uh, Leeuwarden Air Force Base uh, to the northwest of it. That is not included in the sim. Uh, Den Helder has a um, naval air station called Dukoi. It's not included in the sim as a uh, airport that you can select to take off from. So there's a lot of especially military airfields that are actually missing in uh, Flight Simulator 2020. Um, let's just uh, fire up the airplane and get on the, on our way. So let's switch the master lights to on. Navigation, beacon lights go on. Mixture to full rich. Let's open the fuel gallons. Let's see. Well, we are VFR airplane. Let's well, let's just not bother about transponder for this flight. It's not about correct flying. Let's prime the engine. A little bit of throttle and. And that's the engine started. So taxi lights on. Flaps for takeoff. Let's reset our barometer. We are in a low pressure area nowadays, so 1003, that should be about right. And with this set, let's release the parking brake, start our taxi for the runway. I think even with the slightest amount of power, this thing just rockets uh, away. The uh, taxi speed is very high uh, with this uh, Cessna 152 in my uh, opinion. It So let's see if we can find a taxiway towards the runway. Because that's another thing that I have noticed with um, especially grass airports. Uh, they put the volumetric grass over them and of course that looks very nice. But um, I think in the first place for a grass runway the volumetric grass is actually quite high. 
usually you will see that um, uh, the runways if they are grass runways they will have the grass cut really really short um, and the other um, thing that I dislike about the volumetric grass on the runways is because it's so high you can't even see the actual runway anymore because most of the markings disappear in the grass when you're looking from the cockpit so I don't think that is exactly nice I really think they uh, could and should do something about that in a future uh, update so let's see so let's take a look from the cockpits this is my favorite view for VFR flying, where you can see the nose of the aircraft. Still have uh, like a, a nice overview of the uh, main instruments. And we are airborne, so let's climb out, gain a little bit of speed. And altitude, of course. Altitude is safety in an airplane. The higher you are, the more response time you have for uh, emergencies or unexpected situations. But in this airplane altitude is also the enemy because it hasn't got a pressurized cabin so when you go above 10,000 feet you will start to deal have to deal with uh, hypoxia which is basically a shortage of oxygen in the blood to make you uh, slow in your responses eventually unconscious and uh, you might even die in the process so um, we have to gain a little bit of altitude but not too much i think we're going to try to fly at roughly 1, 000, between 1,000 to 1,500 feet. So let's raise the flaps. Trim the nose up a little bit. Once we're at altitude, I'll trim the airplane and then we'll take uh, most of the flight uh, looking from the uh, outside. So let's see if we can level off. So what I'm doing is I'm using my uh, yoke. I really have to pull on the yoke now to, because if I let go of the yoke, the vertical speed will drop. Let's see where it settles. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is lean my mixture and reduce power on the engine. And what I will try to do is use my engine power to set a proper attitude. So let's see. Slightly nose up trim. Again, slightly nose up trim.
now completely have got my hands off the yoke. Let's see where the uh, vertical speed indicator is settling. Because I want that at zero. That means I'm not climbing and I'm not descending. There seems to be a little bit of turbulence. But I will add a little bit of power. Just to tip it to the zero. You really have to give gentle inputs on the controls and give the uh, airplane some time to uh, respond to those control inputs. This looks okay-ish to me. A little bit of extra power. Whilst we come up to the southern tip of the island. Right, so this looks more like it. Let's take a look from the outside. Airplane is relatively stable now. now this is the uh, ferry uh, harbor, where the ferry from uh, Den Helder uh, docks. And then this is probably the... I think this is the beach that the Navy uses to train the Marine Corps. Not really sure though. Not that familiar on this island. But let's fly towards uh, Den Helder, which is uh, on the other side of this uh, sea lane. Tessel, the island, is a very popular holiday destination, uh, both amongst uh, Dutch themselves and Germans. There's always a lot of German uh, touri tourists on the island. And uh, Airfield, uh, that's a popular uh, destination for uh, flight training uh, in the Netherlands. So I'll just leave it to the external view now. Close eye on the vertical speed indication here. It's bouncing up and down roughly around 900 feet, so I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with the way the airplane is trimmed now. So, Den Helder, also uh, the main uh, naval base from the Royal Netherlands Navy, which is down there. So, let's take a quick look on how this uh, city looks. This is the uh, ferry port in Den Helder. I'm sure if you ever visited the island of Tessel, you will have uh, waited in line for the ferry there with your car. Personally, not that familiar in this area. I uh, received a request from uh, someone on a previous video I did uh, flying uh, over the Lelystad area, and uh, he asked me if I could uh, make a flight over Den Helder and then towards Leeuwarden because he wanted to see uh, what the area looked like. Well, it looks like this. Pretty sure that the uh, general shape of the buildings is correct, but again, it's auto-generated buildings, so the houses themselves, they will look completely different uh, in this area. Let's jump back into the cockpit and make a right-hand turn. Because I want to start uh, flying along the coastline towards the uh, Afsluit Dijk and we have to fly the other way around for that so let's just
let's just wait and see what we have here. But anyway, this is the town of Den Helder. So let's fly towards that point over there. That should bring us over the uh, the Koi airfield. I'm pretty curious to see what that looks like because it's not uh, available to uh, select as an uh, airport where you can take off from in the sim. So I've got this gut feeling that there won't even be a runway down there. But let's just uh, fly over it and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's the Koi Airport down there, so that's this one. It does have the correct, well the correct, it does have buildings in places where there are buildings in real life. But I don't see any runway. But I'm also very curious to see what the Bing imagery looks like in that uh, position, because I won't be surprised if the uh, military bases are blurred. And if they are blurred, then it's possible that the autogen won't be able to um, uh, derive the correct buildings to put in those positions. So let's just take a look from the outside. I don't see any runway. Let's just take a look at an aerial photographer of the actual base. There should be a runway, and there isn't one at all. So the Koei Airport is not available for flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Uh, my guess is that we will see the same uh, over at uh, Leeuwarden uh, Air, Force ba Air Force Base. Probably all the other Air Force bases uh, on the face of the Earth. Let's fly along here. I said it before, I'm not overly impressed by the sim. I am impressed by it, but I definitely don't think it's like the best ever or whatever, whatever like that. But again, it is um, very recent. I mean, this is uh, out on the market for like two weeks now. Of course, it has to mature, but um, when I look at this cloud, for instance, I think the edges look quite nice, but the center... What, what makes this cloud... Um, looks nice I think is the uh, difference in colors along the cloud I don't necessarily think it's the shape of the clouds that is good I think the edges are actually quite low res um, and there are some parts that look incredibly nice like this uh, edge down here with the sunlight over it and then there's other things like this that's just so ugly low res and yeah, I, th I think the clouds, uh, let, let me put it this way, I really hope that Hi-Fi simulations or Rex come aboard uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and I'm sure they will, because in my opinion there is a lot of room for improvements over the clouds. Uh, anyone, um, let, let, I've seen better cloud textures in much older sims than this. Uh, and of course, out of the box, this is very nice. I mean, we've seen terrible clouds out of the box in previous versions. So it's definitely an improvement, but this is not like the best clouds ever or anything like that. Uh, anyone who says that, uh, well, I don't really take that... Uh, I can't really take that serious. In terms of the, uh, the global scenery, of course it's very impressive to have everything in ortho imagery. In terms of the uh, autogen, well, the placement is of buildings and the shape of buildings is correct. But that's nothing new. I had that in X-Plane as well, because X-Plane uses OpenStreetMap data. And OpenStreetMap data gives you the 
the shape, the size, the height, everything of a building, and then the autogen can put uh, like a, a building in that size on that exactly that spot. So, although it is nice, and what I really like is the amount of trees, etc., that uh, and, and, and the cars and the performance out of the box and the water and the way li light reflects on the water. That's all awesome in this sim. But a lot of the key features that they advertised with like uh, fly over your own uh, house uh, in uh, in a computer game blah 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 they just don't meet that promise for a large part of the globe and um, the image what you get instead is basically an image that you could already get uh, for instance in explain but i'm sure also in prepared if you were using photo scenery tiles um, and the best, the good thing about Explain is that you could create your own photo scenery tiles. I'm not really sure if that was the case with uh, Prepared. Um, but for the Netherlands, for instance, I created my own photo scenery tiles. And I used X Europe for uh, the, uh, the, the Autogen uh, buildings. That was updated constantly with the latest OpenStreetMap data, so you had a really, really nice approximation of the reality, just like I see here. I mean, this, these ground textures for this part of the world um, add nothing new for me uh, when I compare it to X-Plane. Of course, the big difference is you have this level of uh, scenery quality all across the globe, and that's nice but as we saw in uh, Tesla airport as we saw in Decoy um, there's also a lot of things that aren't there in real life or there are things in real life that aren't there in the sim uh, such as rail bridges I've come across numerous uh, bridges especially uh, south of the uh, Utrecht area in the Netherlands where rail bridges are just plain missing I mean there's a large bridge at uh, Culemborg it's not there. You can see it in the imagery, but there's no 3D object for a bridge. Um, again, there's another bridge near Houten. Also, it, you can see it in the uh, imagery, but there's no 3D object in the sim. And so there's a lot of little things that give me the feeling that it's not complete yet. I, I think that if the developers know this, and that's a big if, I'm not sure whether they do or not. But if they do, then I think they should have waited with uh, releasing the sim. At least six months to make sure that those little things are fixed before release. Because basically what you do with a rush release is you just disappoint a lot of customers. Because they have very high hopes because of all the, the trailers that they saw. And then when they fly actually over their own house, they are flying over a, a satellite photo with basically Lego bricks on them. And, and that's not what what they promised. So I think, of course, the sim is, like I said, two weeks old. They're in the start of uh, what they claim to be a 10-year development curve. So there's a lot of potential for this in the future. I'm, I'm pretty sure this will mature very, very, very nicely. Uh, over time, but that time is not yet here. Um, I really think that, uh, like I said, the clouds, they can look a lot better. And this is better than what we were used to in, for instance, uh, Flight Simulator X, Flight Simulator 2004. But hey, we moved 16 years on in terms of technology. And um, what, what makes this sim so attractive, I think, is not that it gives an exactly nice cloud uh, or an exact uh, representation of the real world on the ground but i think it's the global atmosphere that you get when you look at this i mean the lighting system in this sim is superb there's no other way to describe it it's just outstanding whilst we fly along the uh, afsluit dijk and um yeah i think that the the general feel that you get when you look at this, these skies, this is what uh, the weather uh, kind of looks like in the Netherlands right now. We have 
very heavy showers, dark clouds with very bright sunny spells between them and they give this marvelous lighting and that's something that the sim is doing extremely well so kudos to the developers for that um, but like I said there's also a lot of things that need work on uh, the first patch is underway and uh, if I look at the patch notes I'm not overly impressed by what they do but when I see that the patch is almost 80 gigabytes I'm well, a bit worried for what uh, the, the size of the patches will be if they start to fix the things that I just mentioned. I mean, more 3D objects in terms of bridges everywhere on the globe. Um, stuff like that. I, I, I'm, I'm curious about the future and I will keep following the development of this sim, but I will not switch from X-Plane to it. I think that uh, X-Plane still is a very, very nice uh, sim indeed, although the visuals, of course, it's a bit more polished, it's a bit more shiny in here, the, the lighting system is superb, the overall um, atmosphere of the area that you're in, that's much better depicted in this sim than in X-Plane, so um, kudos to that. But in terms of flight model, um, yeah it doesn't make that much of a difference to me whether I fly in this one or in X-Plane so it's not the giant leap forward that uh, I was maybe expecting or hoping for based on the uh, comments uh, that they had this flight model with like five, uh, what was it, a couple of hundred uh, moving parts that could be affected by the wind and so far it doesn't feel that much different than, uh, than X-Plane and I think X-Plane is still a little bit better now these clouds is just also very low res. I don't really like the texturing on the uh, auto cumulus up there. Or is it Cirrus? I'm not really sure. This is just a massive block. It doesn't have any shape in it. But again the light on the clouds, the shadows, that's what makes this look amazing. But it's not the, the, the cloud textures. Also the reflection on the water is really really nice. This is the Afsluit Dijk, which was built in the 1930s. Before that, uh, this entire area was called the Zuider Zee. It was a sea, so they closed it. And Afsluiten is Dutch for closing, so they closed the the sea off, creating two lake, uh, creating a massive lake. Then they started to dry land. This area is all boulders. Yeah, and they uh, built uh, on that. So we're flying along the Afsluitdijk towards the province of Friesland. I think there's uh, a little bit of rain coming our way. <laughs> and we are actually climbing. Let's um, pull back a little bit on the throttle and descend a little bit uh, down back to uh, 1000 to be out of the uh, bottom layers of the clouds. So maybe we get a bit more clear visibility. back on the power again trying to level off at 1000 we're a bit too early we're climbing slightly so a little less throttle descends and here we are at 1000 
thousand. Let's see where the airplane settles. Yeah, this is pretty good at zero. Still has a little tendency to uh, descend, so a little bit more power. And we are nearing the uh, the end of the offslide dike. The province of Friesland is down there. So let's just um, follow this road. Towards Harlingen and then along the A31 towards uh, Leeuwarden. See what the uh, airbase looks like. Then we'll proceed to the northeast towards Lauwersmeer. And then with a left turn across the other islands back to uh, Tessel. Turn a little bit further to the left. And here we go, probably into the rain. Let's just see what it looks like. Keeps having the uh, tendency to descend slightly, so I'm just going to add a little bit of power. This is much better. Very light climb. So there's the town of Harlinger coming up. Harling is also a very nice uh, old uh, little town. The, it has a, a ferry harbor for um, the other uh, two isles down there, Vlieland and Terschelling. It has a lovely old uh, small inner city. Unfortunately, the coastline isn't made of sand, it's just uh, like uh, Mostly there's like a concrete uh, cycling path, but at least on the dike uh, at warm days you can really uh, lay very nice in the sun and there is a small sandy beach down there.
that's the ferry harbor. And here is the old inner city. These little cities in the province of Friesland, they are very, very nice. They have this very um, yeah, highly characteristic uh, architecture in the, uh, in the houses. It's really old. It's really fun to uh, visit uh, sometimes. Uh. But let's focus on flying a little bit because we are now below 800 feet. That's a little bit too low, so let's climb. And of course we need more power to do that. And I want to follow that uh, A31 highway, so let's fly in this direction. We should come across it. somewhere down there There's that highway. Let's follow that. Uh, until we reach Leeuwarden. So let's reduce power a little bit. Try and keep that uh, vertical speed at zero. We should have Franeker to our right. Let's take a look what that looks like. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I get what's wrong with this. To make a screenshot, I have to press Alt F1. But when you press F1 in the sim, that will cut down the the throttle to zero <laughs> so that's not very convenient I have to change my uh, control bindings uh, for the throttles basically I will switch them off from the keyboard anyway because I'm always using my uh, yoke with the throttle quadrant so there's not much use in uh, having a keyboard binding anyway let's keep following the A31 
making nice progress. Almost, almost halfway there. From Leeuwarden, left turn, like I said, over the Waddensee towards the islands, back to. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, towards Lauwersmeer first. We're not halfway there yet. I think we're uh, roughly at 25-30% on route now. Airplane still climbing lightly, so a little bit less power. Should be Leeuwarden up ahead. I think that's the town of Marsum. Yep, that's Marsum, and this should be Leeuwarden Air Force Base. That's the city of Leeuwarden. Leeuwarden Air Force Base, there should be two runways. This is the air base. This is the town of Marsum. And as you can see, there are no runways over at the uh, Air Force Base. We have a control tower, so that's nice. There is, seems to be some taxiways, there is absolutely no ground imagery, it's just green. And there are no runways, so my guess is that uh, Asobo had to uh, remove all the military airfields uh, from their uh, sim. For some reason, I can't really figure out why, because, well, why can't you have it in a sim when it's just clear on Google Maps? I mean, come on. But anyway, they probably have their reasons for it. Because it's striking that it's mostly military airfields that are missing. Oh. So let's fly a circle over the city of uh, Leeuwarden. So let's turn to the right. A little bit less power, we are quite high now. The general shape of the city of Leeuwarden seems to be correct. Um, there is high-rise buildings uh, near the uh, station, which is down there. So the overall general look of the city, the, the contours, let's say that, they seem to be quite correct. Although when you go here in real life the buildings look uh, completely different. So does the railway station that is not correctly modeled. Because if I uh, pause the sim here and I just go to street view for this particular area. That's funny because in it, it is available in 3D in Microsoft, but 
I thought they said that the areas that were uh, available in 3D in Google Maps would be available in 3D in the sim, but that's definitely not the case. This is what it looks like in real life. So this is basically the type of image that I was expecting to see based on all the previews that uh, they released uh, before they released the sim. This is what you expect to see. This is what you get. So this tower, this building, they have roughly the same shape. But as you can see in terms of texturing, doesn't look anything like this at all. That's what I was trying to uh, explain all the time. So like I said, the, the contours of the city, the skyline, that's probably correct. In terms of the shapes of the buildings. But in terms of texturing, uh, the world uh, in real life doesn't look anything like this at all. And I'm a bit disappointed that it looks like this with Autogen, when there in fact, in fact there is uh, the, the 3D models. But no, when the 3D models are available that they were advertising with, that most cities would look like. I mean, this, this is very disappointing. Um, I really hope that they will uh, fix this in a future uh, update. Uh, because I saw the same thing in Amsterdam, that's also with just like this. So, so far I've only seen what they advertised with in certain parts of the United States. Uh, I thought uh, Lancaster and Los Angeles, they looked pretty good. Uh, New York looks excellent if you fly over Manhattan. That's really what they advertised with. But this, um, this is not uh, what they promised in the in the previews, definitely not. Let me just unpause it. There we go. Let's gain some altitude, because in all my enthusiasm I was uh, not really paying attention to the air actual flying. So let's go back to roughly uh, 900 feet. Let's fly towards the northeast slightly for the Lauer's Meer. So here we go. So let's just uh, continue, let's fly towards Tokum, then slightly further to the right, Lauersmeer, like I said. So let's just uh, enjoy the countryside from the air, which is always the best perspective uh, in my humble opinion. Again the water and the reflection of light on the water, that, that is awesome.
when you are flying at altitude, when you are not looking too closely at the actual textures of the buildings, I think the uh, the sim gives a very nice general uh, um, feeling of what this area looks like. Yeah. Does that to a very high standard with the uh, all the trees, a lot of 3D objects. It's really a, a nicely populated world that you are flying over. And again, that's nothing new. That was also the case in X Plane 11. But especially the trees in uh, within the villages, etc. That's that's done to a very high standard here. If you look at the big picture, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it, it is pretty good. When you start to look in detail, uh, it isn't. And it's not what they promised. So let's hope that they will fix that in uh, future updates. Like I said, the sim is two weeks old. And we just have to uh, see... Oh. how it uh, develops uh, in the future I think this is Dokkum yes it is As you can see the province of Friesland is very green, there's a lot of grass, so there's a lot of dairy farms in here. In this, uh, uh, this part of the Netherlands. Now down there that's Lauwersmeer already, so let's just uh, wave at Tokkum. And continue our flights. According to our plan, let's uh, take a look from the cockpit again. And turn left. There's not a lot of turbulence uh, today, so that's uh, always nice. It's nice, clean, quiet airs. Cars are actually uh, driving on the wrong side of the roads, unless you're in uh, Great Britain, but uh, of course in this part of the world. Let's see. Here it is correct again. That's strange. Well, anyway, those are very minor details, at least there's cars driving, so that's a positive thing. But uh, then again, not unique, that was also the case in other sims already. So here's the uh, Lauwersmeer area.
then that must be Lauer's Oog. Some uh, excellent fish restaurants down there. If you like fish, uh, that's uh, a really a place to go. Fresh catch of the day, straight from the sea. And it's also quite a nice area to, uh, to walk through. And if you like bird watching, uh, this is also the place for you. But anyway, we have reached Lauer's Mere. Let's start to make a left-hand turn to fly uh, towards uh, some of the other islands and then back to uh, Tessel. Let's ease down a little bit on the throttle, descend a little bit back towards 1100, 1000 feet. Very slowly, very gentle. And let's take another look from the outside. So this is probably Parsons. Then to the left of that there should be Ness. I think it's that one. Then that must be Viren. Judging by this cloud, I don't really want to fly underneath that one. So let's just uh, fly a little bit towards this area and then see uh, if it's actually over the island or behind it. When it's over it, we're gonna fly back towards the mainland. So, Parsons. Then that's the little town of Ness. Judging by the shadows, I think these uh, these showers are over the islands. But look at the reflection of the clouds in the water. That is very nicely done. You can set that in uh, some other uh, sims, but usually it eats performance like mad. Um, and of course, that's one of the big advantages that uh, Flight Sim 2020 has. Uh, it can really lean on the on the newest technology in terms of graphic cards etc and most of the other sims uh, like explain 11 that's from 2016 so it's most of the sims are at least four years old meaning that they were developed with technology that was four years old or this sim could be developed with the new the latest technology uh, in terms of the graphic uh, rendering and that really pays off because the uh, the performance is actually very good with the visual settings that we're having right here. I would have to run a system test on my X-Plane uh, with the default airplane with all the sliders maxed. Uh, but then I won't uh, have the same atmosphere as I have in this image because the clouds are just uh, much, much worse in, uh, in X-Plane. I keep saying I don't like the textures in this, there's room for improvement, but it's definitely not. Um, for an out of the box sim, this is not bad. But it's not good either. It can be a lot better. I've seen much better cloud textures in older sims when uh, you uh, buy certain add ons, such as Rex, such as Active Sky. And those will come aboard for this, and then you will be amazed by what the skies look like. I promise you that. And then you will see that this is actually quite shallow, more game-like, and that 
the only thing that's saving this image right now is the lighting system with the light and the shadows and the reflection on the waters but it's not necessarily the clouds themselves that make this image so anyway we're coming up to Ameland Then we should have Schier Monnik Oog here. That's correct, but we're not gonna fly there. We'll turn left here and fly along the island back towards Tessel. So let's go back to the cockpit and make that left hand turn. Of course, when you're in an airplane, it's always a good habit to first scan the horizon in the direction where you want to go so i want to go left so i scan the horizon for other traffic and once i'm satisfied that there is no other traffic then i will start to bank implement rudder and pull slightly on the yoke to make a coordinated turn to the left now when you make a video about good flying those are the things that you really have to uh, look into i don't want to do that with this video this is more uh, of a scenery focused video, so good flying, clean flying is not really uh, the, uh, the focal point here. But it's nice to hear me talk about something else than the scenery and the clouds for a change. So we'll fly alongside the islands. I think this is uh, quite a nasty uh, sh rain shower uh, down there. Quite anxious to see whether we will run into more turbulence uh, now that we're closer to uh, what looks like an active shower. You would expect certain winds uh, surrounding it and they will have to affect the airplane. So far it seems very stable, very nice, very calm. So let's see if that changes uh, over time. Uh, the weather report for the Netherlands uh, stated that there was um, a significant chance of thunderstorms uh, over the uh, entire country and if I look at this I would say this is a thunderstorm building maybe it's not fully developed but these are the type of clouds that you really want to stay away from uh, in a general aviation airplane and even in a uh, airliner uh, they will the pilots will probably ask uh, factors to uh, avoid having to fly through clouds like this and they will get them from air traffic control because with the um, the winds in and around those uh, thunderstorms the turbulence is can be very rough uh, and that's not pleasant uh, for you as a passenger and it's also not very good for the airplane it can withstand a lot of turbulence uh, airliners are uh, tested for really extreme conditions so they won't break at the first uh, amount of turbulence but it's always better to well uh, choose for passenger comfort than to uh, fly straight through a thunderstorm my father was a flight instructor uh, at uh, at KLM and he always told me always respect the forces of nature whether you go into the water whether you go into the air you are a guest you are in an environment that you don't belong so respect the forces that you're dealing with and I think that's always a very wise advice and also in the air we are just visitors we don't belong here it's pretty insane that we uh, managed to uh, master the technology that allows us to fly but I'm very grateful that uh, the Wright brothers did because it's quite an interesting science uh, to play with
Uh, we now definitely have storms building down there. Time to head back to Tessel. But I think we're gonna have to uh, take one from the team by flying uh, underneath this uh, shower. Doesn't really look like a Cumulo Nimbus uh, right now, so it's probably just a, a normal shower. But let's see what happens when we fly underneath one. It's a nice test for the flight uh, model, so let's go to the cockpits. Well, so far not a lot seems to be happening. So it's probably just a big cloud. Nothing too serious. But you immediately see the difference in the in the in the light intensity. Um, well, one of my other hobbies is photography, so I'm very sensitive to looking at uh, the lighting of a scene. Um, because yeah, well, I've been making uh, photos for well, more than a decade at least, and that's why I keep mentioning the lighting engine that is so superb you can really see this subtle differences in the light intensity throughout the sim and that's a very solid base to uh, evolve this platform further into what has the potential to become an amazing simulator I hope they will go that way and that they will um, stick to their promise of a 10 year development uh, plan because although I'm not too much blown away by Flight Sim 2020 right now I strongly believe that this has a lot of potential and I really hope that uh, the developers manage to, um, to to hang on to the momentum that they have now in terms of the sim popularity the amount of publicity etc and that they will keep improving it further and further because um, well it's definitely uh, in terms of uh, a platform uh, in terms of the technology that's behind it it is said to be quite revolutionary and a lot of the the, the developers that developed sceneries for the uh, older sims uh, are now busy uh, with the uh, with the development of add-on sceneries and they all say wow the, the possibilities are almost endless so that gives very uh, very high expectations for the future let's just see if uh, if they can live up to those expectations and if they can't it's really up to themselves because then you shouldn't uh, make statements like wow possibilities are almost endless well, the, the, the tool the development tool the SDK scenery development kit is still in, uh, in in development it's not finished but already they claim that they can do uh, awesome things with it so let's just uh, hope that that is actual actually the truth and that they can live up to the expectations that they raise with such statements anyway I really have the uh, impression of flying over the Netherlands in terms of the, the weather the light the clouds um, when I look outside my window it's like a cloud like this that I can see right now and behind that there is a sunny spell so the general picture the general atmosphere created in this uh, in this picture that's actually very good so let's fly towards the next island which is called Ter Schelling after Terschelling we will fly to Vlieland and then it's Tessel again where we will come in for a landing at the airfield there. And that will have concluded our flight but we're not there yet. Still a long way to go. As you can see it's another long island, a bit of sea lane, a shorter island and then it's Tessel and the airport is somewhere down here. So I think we are now two thirds uh, en route maybe 75 percent 
the island of Ter Terschelling is also uh, a very popular holiday destination. Uh, Vlieland um, is to some extent, but the southern part of Vlieland, that is called the Vliehorst. And that's actually the uh, uh, a military exercise area, especially for the Air Force. They practice their bombing runs uh, there, so there's uh, some some targets down there, and they can uh, practice dropping bombs on top of them. It's called the Vliehorst, but we'll uh, probably see something uh, when we fly over it, unless they've blurred it because it's a military area. Quite s curious to see uh, what they did to that. Now the sea that we are flying over, that is the Waddenzee, and that entire uh, area is uh, basically dubbed a uh, area of outstanding natural beauty. Uh, the tides are very strong and when they retreat, when it's low tide, um, you can actually see the sea floor and it's actually possible to walk across the sea floor from the mainland to an island. Not really sure which one it was. Never done it, don't have the intention to try it. Because I can imagine it must smell awful with all the mud, etc. And uh, it's probably quite heavy to walk. Because you will constantly sink all the way down into uh, the mud with your uh, with your legs. So, doesn't sound like much fun to me. I'm, I'm an avid hiker, I love hiking uh, through nature. But I can't really uh, motivate myself to go uh, walk through... Uh, a huge puddle of mud for a couple of hours to reach an island. Doesn't sound like that much fun to me, but there are people who, who like it and it's impressive. And uh, I know that a um, friend of mine is in the Air Force and in, as a part of their basic training they did one of those walks. So they walked uh, through the mud to an island uh, and it was pretty heavy, uh, he told me. wouldn't try it if you are uh, if your condition isn't very good or if you have a heart disease or anything like that it can be really really tough anyway we are now over Ter Schelling There's especially a lot of nature around this uh, island. Um, among the Dutch youth, this island is well known as a party island. Uh, there's a lot of youth campings uh, where there's uh, some heavy partying going on during the summer holidays. I've never been there myself, but uh, those uh, who do think it's a lot of fun, but you really have to be a party animal to like it, I think. But anyway. Um, oh, no, press the wrong button. So as you can see, most of the towns are in the uh, southwestern part of the island, along one road. So let's just see how that is uh, oh, depicted in the sim. Let's fly the correct way. That was a bit aggressive, sorry.
think that's the first town coming up. Yes, it is. Some dark clouds up ahead. I think we might be in for a little bit of nasty weather on the uh, final uh, legs of this flight. Let's just... Uh, see how it goes. Let me just grab my iPhone for the actual rain radar. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, rain showers uh, in this area right now, but we're flying towards definitely seems like uh, it's raining there in real life, so let's go back into the flight deck, uh, the cockpit, I'm sorry. And let's release power slightly to stay below the clouds. We are in VFR, so visual flight rules means we have to uh, keep visual contact with the uh, with the area surrounding us. We're not uh, it's not the intention to fly above or through clouds. Now I think uh, the depiction of the island is uh, quite nice. Again, it's one road with a lot of uh, the villages uh, next to it in the southwesterly corner. So, yeah. Again, the general image, the, the big impression, that is very, very nice. It's a very nice approximation of the real uh, thing that you would see from an airplane. It's just a bit of a shame that they... Uh, well, that, that it's not a 3D model of the actual building that is down there. I mean, that is possible because we saw that in, like, New York, uh, Los Angeles, uh, Lancaster. Lancaster, California, that is. Yeah, so it would be nice if they, uh, they could bring that uh, to Europe as well. I think uh, it's just a matter of time before they do, but... Uh, until they do that, there's not much um, reason for me to switch to this platform, other than the fabulous lighting engine. But that is nice, but it's not worth it to me to spend hundreds of dollars again on add-ons that I basically already own for other sims. But who knows what the future holds. We'll just keep following the developments. Like I said, this platform has a lot of potential to become one of the very best uh, simulations uh, ever. But it's just not there yet. And it can't be, it's only two weeks old. It looks like it's a rain shower, but so far I don't see raindrops on the window and the rain effects are on. Flew through a, a shower yesterday. It was actually quite nice, nice sound effects as well. So we are 
almost clear of Ter Schelling and then we have Vlieland coming up with a shallow turn to the left. That's the island already there on the uh, horizon. Now, but because of the lighting system, I think my next flights will be in Ireland. I visited Ireland last year and it was amazing and what made the landscape was the lighting, the, 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 the storms, the showers that were blown in from the Atlantic over the beautiful uh, landscapes made that the landscape changed every minute. I'm very anxious to see if uh, this sim has the ability to to do that, to uh, recreate the the mystic feel that you get when you are in Ireland, uh, looking at those beautiful hilly landscapes with bright spells, with dark clouds, dark shadows, large contrasts. It's very, very nice and gentle lighting, especially when you are near the west coast. Really anxious to see uh, what that will look like in the sim, so that's going to be one of my first uh, next flights in here. Another part of the world that I really want to explore in this sim is Iceland visited Iceland in 2017. It was a beautiful trip and I'm really uh, anxious to see what the uh, scenery looks like there. I tried to recreate it in X-Plane with the uh, ortho of uh, scenery tiles but it was very difficult to find photo scenery tiles that uh, didn't have clouds on them so I'm actually quite anxious to see what Iceland will look like in this sim. And there are some very challenging airports in uh, in Iceland to uh, to fly into, uh, with uh, Isa Fjordor being uh, one of the most challenging approaches. You have to fly in uh, along the the cliffs of a fjord into the fjord. There's a small village with an airport airport that is just one runway. You have to make a descending left hand turn over that village, and then you have to be uh, you're like 50 feet from the ground when you are in front of the runway. It's it's amazing. I really want to fly that one in uh, in this sim. I think I'm gonna do a video on that one. Anyway, Vlieland coming up on the horizon. Vlieland is one of the smaller islands in the uh, Wadden Island chain because these islands are called the Wadden Island Islands Wadden Eilanden in Dutch uh, Wadden, um, yeah, it's, it's like the, the dry uh, sea floor uh, when, the, when we have low tide that's called a Wad in Dutch, so Wadden Zee and it basically runs also across northern Germany to the uh, corner here with the uh, with Denmark. It's an out. It's it's a very lovely area. Anyway, we are drifting away, so let's turn ourselves back towards Vlieland.
So this is uh, Oost Vlieland. Small town on the island. Uh, sorry, that will be Oost Vlieland. Let's see what this is. Ah, this, uh, these are campings and holiday homes. And that big white thing down there, that's probably the sandy area of uh, what I called uh, the Flea Horst. The, uh, practice range for the Dutch Air Force to uh, drop their bombs. And from the Vlieghorst it is only a short hop back to Tessel. Then we have to fly to the Coxdorp and then along the road we'll go back to the airport. There is the island of Tessel already, so the uh, the end of our flight is near. Let's just cross this military airspace first. Don't want to do this in real life. Especially not when they are exercising. Because those fighters are so fast you can't see them coming. And they're so powerful that you don't want to fly through their wake air turbulence. Especially not when they're on afterburner. But anyway, this uh, area looks a bit like a moon landscape. <laughs> this is the, uh, the exercise range for the Air Force coming up. This part here. It's called the Vlieghorst. And there is our final destination, Tessel, on the horizon. Some nasty showers approaching the island. So 
so I think it's uh, wise to uh, land as soon as possible before all hell breaks loose in the skies over our little islands. Now the wind was coming in from the southwest, it was roughly uh, 11 uh, knots when we uh, started the flight. So with an airspeed of 91 we probably have a ground speed of roughly 80 knots uh, right now. Oh, but look at the dark clouds over there, let's uh, just jump back into the cockpit. Start make that left hand turn towards Tessel. From this tip we should see a road to a village and then follow that road with the airport being down there. So let's see, there is that village, this is the tip of the island, should be a lighthouse somewhere down here. The airport is down there. Those uh, white buildings. Basically from this bay, when we fly in that direction, we should be uh, pretty much lined up with the runway, so let's do that. slightly to the left of this little water down here so that's a good reference point that's the uh, airport down there yep there it is all right so let's start to make a shallow right hand turn apply full mixture There's our little runway. There it is. So slightly to the left. We don't have a precision approach path indicator for this uh, approach, but let's uh, cut down on the throttle. Start to uh, lose some speed. So first stage of flaps, trim the nose down a little bit, 70 knots, 
let's set the flaps to full. And with just over 60 knots, let's try to land here on the dirt strip of Tessel Airport. And close the throttle. Here we are. Back home at Tessel. So that was the flight along the northern part of the Netherlands. Tessel, Den Helder, Afsluitdijk, Harlingen, Leeuwarden, Lauwersmeer. Ameland, Terschelling, Vlieland and back to Tessel again. I hope you liked the video, I hope I could give you a good impression on what the uh, scenery in this part of the Netherlands looks like. Hope to see you all again another day on another video. Thank you for watching and bye bye.